The most important thing to keep in mind for horsepower on an electric motor is it has almost nothing to do with horsepower on a gasoline engine. They really are that different. For example, I also have an electric motorcycle and the motor on that's rated for eight horsepower. And yet without a transmission, I can just twist my throttle and stick right on the tail of any Harley, no problem. Uh, horsepower really doesn't mean a whole lot on electric motors. They have a lot of torque. They just have that oomphy go power. And in my Metro, I can actually start from a dead stop in any gear, including fifth, without a clutch. That's the difference between torque and horsepower. Another thing that we'll notice on a motor like this is that it uses a face mount design. We're able to put bolts through from this face portion into the adapter plate. And that's what's actually going to hang the motor onto the transmission. Some other motors, sometimes they might have a, a foot coming off the bottom. And if we were using a motor like that, we would have to make some sort of an L-shaped adapter plate for the motor to sit on the foot and then still line up with, uh, with the transmission and that adapter plate for everything to go together. So let's take just a little bit closer look at this motor here. As I said, I already pulled out the, uh, the bolts out of the end of it. So what I'm gonna do now is we're just real gently gonna pull this motor apart. So now you have a little bit better view. Here we've got our drive shaft. Here's the drive shaft. You can see it has a keyway on there and that's what would be used to attach it to a pulley or some other power connection. Through the middle here, uh, this is our electromagnet. This is what all the electricity goes through and creates a magnetic field as it spins. Uh, this right here, believe it or not, is not bubble gum, but rather when they make the motor, they add a little bit of a putty weight that uh, balances the motor so that it, it stays nice and smooth as it spins. Down here, this is the end bearing. And this part right here is called the commutator. And the commutator is a, a pretty important part of the motor. Uh, what happens there is each of these copper bars is separated by a slot and these go over through this copper, through the iron, and creates the magnetic field. And because each of these is separated, every time the brushes hit one of these from one to the next, it alternates the electric field to make a push-pull, push-pull effect that uh, spins the motor around like this. Now inside the shell here, this is one of the coils. This motor has four of them. Some motors might have six. Uh, basically, they're just uh, uh, copper coiled around a iron block inside there, and that's the magnetic field that this one fights against to make the spinning motion. Now, in the very back of this, we've got the brushes, and the commutator here lines up with the brushes. Now, also, over here, this is usually called the drive end, sometimes abbreviated DE, and here and over here, is called the commutator end, sometimes abbreviated as CE. Now what you're looking at is the inside of the motor. Around the edges, you can see those uh, field coils right here. Uh, when you get your motor and pull it apart, you're gonna wanna take a look at that coils and make sure that the varnish doesn't look like it's worn off. If it is, you may want to pull out the screws that hold these in take them out, clean them up, and re-varnish them. I did that with just a, a can of uh, a spray-on green varnish. It really worked great. And it was just, uh, oh, an hour or two in the afternoon to really clean that all up. In the back are the brushes. And the brushes are basically just carbon, uh, little blocks of carbon that conduct the electricity. And they have little springs. So you can see here how uh, the brush can slide up and down as it's pressed in with that little spring. Well, what you're going to want is some sort of a, uh, a screwdriver or a pick or something. You can stick that through from the outside and pull back the spring. And then when you do that, you can slide the brush up and let the spring press back against it to hold the brushes out of the way. And you're always going to want the brushes held out of the way when you're trying to get the armature in and out. Now, you also want to inspect those brushes to make sure they don't look burnt, that they're not cracked. Um, that they're in, in good condition. Um, if you need new brushes, they are commonly available. Uh, consult the yellow pages or the internet to find a forklift repair shop somewhere near you. And brushes ran me about $50. Uh, mine were, were in really bad condition. There wasn't much left to them, so I needed new ones. So I paid 50 bucks for the motor, 50 bucks for the brushes. 
and uh, you know, five bucks for the can of epoxy. And with a little elbow grease, I basically had a brand new motor for about $100. Here is another view of the commutator end. Uh, this time I've got the commutator end bolts removed just to make a little room so we can see in here. Um, this here is the commutator itself. Here's one of the brushes. Um, that brush is pulled back right now. This little spring holds it in there. So if we pull that back, that lets us slip the brush in and then that little hook goes right over the top of the brush to push it down just gently against the commutator. Now it's not going to do it right, right now because we've got this pulled apart, but just to show you how that works. So we do just want to make sure that all the brushes are pulled back when we slide that back in there. And again, always be careful with the commutator and how things line up so you're not bashing anything around on the inside there. So we'll just use this little uh, scribey, punchy thing here to pull that. Pull the brush back out, let the spring rest on the side of the brush, and it'll keep it held out in the outward position like that. So the motor that I ended up using for my project came out of a Nissan forklift motor. It really didn't have an identification plate on it. In fact, the thing was just amazingly rusty when I got it. I bought it for 50 bucks out of a guy's garage where it was still in a forklift motor that he was taking apart. He was using the hydraulics to build a, uh, a lift for his car, for his garage. Um, I did make sure that the motor itself spun first. I brought with me one of those uh, portable jump starter devices, kind of the, the battery with the jumper cables on it. And I put that on the motor, just put, you know, put the two connections right on the power posts. And I brought with an extra little piece of cable to make the connections. And it did spin barely. I actually had to uh, spin the drive shaft first and then it went, but it spun. So I figured that was a good sign. I brought the motor home. I took all the end bolts out. I took the motor apart. I cleaned it up. I revarnished the field coils. I got all the grease out of there. I put it all back together. It was basically a couple hours worth of work. And when I was done, I basically had a brand new motor. The brushes I picked up at a local forklift repair place. I paid $50 for a set of four brushes, brand new. They had them right there in stock. Uh, very easy to replace. You just have to pull the old ones out, uh, pull out one screw that holds in the electrical connector for the brush, uh, put the new one in, put that screw back in, slide the brush back into position, and you're ready to go again. Electric motors are very simple and very durable. I can't imagine taking apart a gasoline engine and rebuilding it in one afternoon. I wouldn't even know where to start. But an electric motor, for me never having done this before, it really wasn't that tough. So take a look around. You should be able to find a good used serial, series wound forklift motor at uh, a junkyard, possibly through someplace like Craigslist. You might want to check around at uh, uh, electrical rebuilders, repair shops. There might even be a forklift rebuilding place near you. Give them a call, see what you can find, and I'm sure you'll be able to find a good used motor for not too much money.